the Jack Benny Program. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. As you probably know, this is my first television show of the season. And I want everybody at home who's watching the show to sort of sit back and relax and take it easy because this is a very simple show, nothing to it, you know. There's been no commotion backstage at all. I mean, nobody has worked hard. That is nobody but my makeup man. He's exhausted. <laughs> If I had the makeup on my shoulders that he put on my face, I could play the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> but I would like to tell you something of my plans for television this season. I'm, go I'm going to have guests on my program, some from my radio show, and then some very, very important guest stars from the movies. Of course, uh, on my radio show, you see, it's very difficult for me to get guest stars because... Uh, well, I don't pay much, you see. I mean, there's no reason for it. I just don't believe in it, you see. But you see, in television, it's entirely different because a lot of people like to come on and be seen. Now, on my second show, which is about six weeks from now, oh, I have, I have some of the most wonderful entertainers that you've ever seen in your life. I, I can't mention their names right now because I haven't got them, their contract signed yet, you see. But if you like train seals, don't miss <laughs> these, these seals are simply wonderful. They've got one seal, one of these train seals, that does a trick. He balances a basketball on his nose, you know, and keeps balancing it and twirling it and bouncing it up and down. He, he's amazing. Well, I tell you, this, this seal is so good with this basketball that he was already offered $500 to throw the show. <laughs> but on this show, my guests on this show are, um, of course, you know, I've been rehearsing so much, I get a little bit confused. And, oh, hello, boys. <laughs> I, um, oh, yes, I have the uh, Park Avenue Hillbilly, Dorothy Shea, and Frank Remley, and Don Wilson. Those are my three guests here. And so first, I, uh, I'd like to introduce... Oh, before I do, I've got to tell you one joke, a story. As a rule, I don't tell jokes, you know, I just talk, you know. But this is a joke that I heard when I was playing at the Palladium Theater in London. It's about an actor who was standing in front of the Palladium in London, and a fellow walked over to him, and this actor was very blue and very dejected, and a friend of his walked over to him, and he said, I say, Derek... See, most of the actors in London are called Derek, you know. They, they have an occasional Basil or a Sidney or a Cecil, but Derek seems to be the popular name there. So one of the, this fellow walked over to this actor and he said to him, Derek, what's the matter with you? You look so blue. He said, oh, it's nothing. He said, well, there must be something the matter with you. Now, what is it? So this actor said, he said, well, let me tell you what happened. He said, about three weeks ago, an uncle of mine died and left me 10,000 pounds. He says, two weeks ago, another uncle of mine died and left me 5,000 pounds. Now, last week... Stage manager. Last week... Hey, 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 hey. Say, uh, I wonder if you'd uh, draw those travelers and uh, bring down my scenery. Yeah. Thank you. Say, would you give this music to Mr. Merrick, please? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, I was on the Alan Young Show, and I sang a song, and the, the, re the response was so wonderful that I'd like to do an encore for you tonight, if you will, Mr. Merrick. Thank you. I'm sending you a big bouquet of roses. But you'll always be untrue I'm tired of forgiving Now there's nothing left to do So I'm sending you a big bouquet of roses One for every time you broke my heart A big bouquet of roses One for every time you
So this actor... (laughs) So this actor said, Last week, my uncle died and left me nothing. That's the end of the joke. (laughs) Of course, the, uh, I mean, the joke is naturally a lot better when I can go right through it. You see what I mean? Instead of being interrupted like, oh, Bob, Bob, come here a minute, will you, just before you leave? I, I happened to see that show that you did with Alan Young, you know, the one you were just telling the folks about, and I thought you were wonderful. I mean, I thought it was a great show. I enjoyed it. But, I mean, why would you do your encore on my first television show? I mean, why didn't you do it on his show or, or on your own show? I mean, well, Club re- 15, isn't it? It really wasn't my idea. You see, it was my brother Everett's. He uh, handles all of my business. Oh, you mean your brother, he's your agent? That's or? right. He represents me and my brother Bing and also a trained seal. You mean he handles trained seals? Well, he has one particular trained seal. This one has an act that is just wonderful. He balances a basketball on his nose. It's wonderful. Oh, really? Uh... Everett says that some jerk is going to use him on television. <laughs> Somebody else is going to use them. I won't want them, of course. <laughs> you say your brother is an agent. Huh? That's right. He gets 10% of everything I earn. Oh, well, as an agent, he would deserve that. Well, yeah. Jack, thanks for the use of the hall. I've got to run home. We have a new baby at home. Oh, right. yes. For heaven's sake, I forgot all about that. Bob, congratulations. Well, thank you, Jack. That's just wonderful. How, how many children have you got now? Well, this makes my fifth. Five children. They're wonderful. Yeah. Five more, and I'm going to have to give one to Everett. <laughs> Right. He, he, he gets 10%. Oh, sure. sure. I, I understand. Would you help me? Pardon? I've got to go. Would you help me? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it's been wonderful. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> Big star, no tip. <laughs> And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to... Oh, uh, before we go on with the show, I must tell you that uh, tonight, or tomorrow night, rather, Mary and I are flying to New York City because the uh, Friars Club in New York is giving me a testimonial dinner at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel to commemorate my 20th year on the radio. Just imagine, 20 years that I've been on the radio. Now, during those 20 years, I've heard so many people say, you know, at different times I've heard people say, gee, I can't see Benny at all. You know? Well, now they can. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Jack. I'd Jack. like to present him. Jack. Oh, Don Wilson. Don Wilson. Jack, I'm awfully sorry to be late, but uh, my car broke down and I had to take a taxi. Well, that's all right, Don. I mean, accidents can happen, you see. I know, but I was supposed to be here to introduce you at the very opening of the show, and I, I'm really awfully sorry that this happened. Don, it doesn't make any difference. The orchestra played Love and Bloom. I came on. Everybody applauded. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't matter. You know? Oh, Jack, I had such a wonderful introduction for you. You did? Yeah. What was it? Huh? Well, this being your opening television show of the season, I thought I might say... And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great deal of pride that I bring you the greatest comedian in America, Jack Benny. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Don. Wait. Now I'm glad you were late. I mean, the greatest comedian in America. I mean, how egotistical can we get? I mean, you'd have these people hating me before the, the show even started. I mean, they'd tune out their, do- their, their television sets. The greatest comedian in America. But, Jack, you are the greatest comedian in America, aren't you? Well, yes, but I mean, to, to, say it, to those people would sound awful. You well, know. Jack, you're not saying it, I'm saying it. Oh, oh, well, then that's different. Oh, well, then you can always introduce me like that. All right. Oh, sure, I won't mind that. Just, uh, 
Mister? Yeah? That's you. The fat one. Yes? Hey, you got out of my cab in such a hurry you forgot your briefcase. Oh, how stupid of me. Thank you. Thank you very much. See, I have some very, very important papers in there. Thanks a great deal, and uh, here's a little something for your trouble. Gee, a five-dollar bill. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, you're certainly welcome. <laughs> Don. Don, five dollars? Well, I mean, I, I can appreciate your being grateful and everything, but, but five dollars. Jack, there's nothing so strange about that. I once saw you give a man five dollars. Well, I know, but he was a lifeguard. He saved me from drowning. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget how we dickered the third time that I was going down. <laughs> Doc, what we carried on, really, you... Hey, wait a minute. Uh, Ain't you Jack Funny? Yes, yes. How do you like that? Don't you remember me? No, no, I don't. Know. I'm Harry Gilmore. You and me went to Waukegan High School together. Waukegan High School? Yeah, don't you remember? I was the one voted most likely to succeed. Oh, really? Yeah, I got my own cab. <laughs> oh, well, isn't that nice? Yeah, it certainly yeah. is. Hey, uh, what are you doing now? <laughs> I'm the voice of Bucks Bundy. <laughs> So you gave up that lousy fiddle, huh? Yes, I gave it up. Get out of here. Well, goodbye, Jack. Goodbye. Goodbye, Don. So long. He's cute, isn't he? Fast the cute, I mean. So this actor... Oh, I told that. I told that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it really gives me great pleasure to present to you now the guest star of my first show. A young lady whose voice you've heard many, many times, and you've certainly heard a lot of her records. The Park Avenue Hillbilly, Miss Dorothy Shea. Well, I mean, you're, uh, you're a hillbilly? So not funny. <laughs> Well, now I know what all the feuding and fussing was about. <laughs> yeah, I can't get over it, so you're a hillbilly, huh? Well, Jack, I'm not just a hillbilly. I'm the Park Avenue hillbilly. Oh, the Park Avenue hillbilly. Yeah. Well, you can park on my avenue anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good ad lib, didn't you? Ad lib? What's that? Well, an ad-lib is when you say something impromptu, you know, without thinking, just something on the spur of the moment. See what I mean? No, but I accept your apology. <laughs> well, now, look at Dorothy. What are you going to sing for your first number? What's the name of the song you're going to sing? Well, don't you think we should discuss salary? That's a wonderful title. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Jack! Jack! Oh, well... You can have your New York City with its swank Park Avenue. You can have your gilded mansions in Westchester. You can have your own cabana in Miami or Havana, where the blue bloods congregate for their siesta. You can have your fancy penthouse on some 42nd floor. But I'll guarantee wherever you may roam With the tinsel and the glare Why, those places can't compare With the humble little spot I call my home It's a little western town called Beverly Hills Where people live a life that's free from care no one struggles to be great. All they ask is an even break. They're satisfied to just be millionaires. Every housewife is contented with her lot. And some of them don't even own a yacht. She may have just one swimming pool, one husband to caress her. She's bored to death with Cadillacs, and diamonds just depress her. She'd rather have some trinket like that Oscar on her dresser 
In that little western town called Beverly Hills. In that little western town called Beverly Hills. You're welcome as the flowers that bloom in May. No one cares about your past or inquires about your past. If you only have one butler, that's okay. The children ring your bell on Halloween. Then beat it in a chauffeured limousine. Each mother with a little son entrusted to her care will gently rock his cradle as she offers up a prayer that someday he'll be president of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. In that little western town called Beverly Hills, give me a raisin. so much. I thought you folks might be interested in meeting some of my kin folks. So with your permission, we'd like to take you down to the Ozarks and meet my favorite cousin, Zeke Benny and his mad mountain boys. <laughs> meet some of the boys. You will meet a fellow over here with the concertina. That's Charlie Bagby. He's the smart one of the troop here. Hey, Charlie, how much is two and two? <laughs> He's our business manager. <laughs> fellow here with the clarinet is Wayne Songer. We're mighty proud of Wayne. Last week at the county fair, he won first prize at the fly attraction contest. <laughs> Wasn't even entered. <laughs> this is my wife. This is our boy, Sam. <laughs> Get up here, Frank. This is Frankie Remley over here. 
Bramley's been associated with Phil Harris for about 20 years. Glad to see you standing up, Frank. <laughs> Never took a guitar lesson in his life, just took it up by accident. He figured as long as his hand was shaking anyway, he might as well put a guitar in <laughs> He's a fella makes us laugh all the time. He's a car. Say something funny, Frankie. Ride the potash! <laughs> and now, folks... Hey, Lamb! We... Uh -huh. Now, listen, Lamb. I got a bone to pick with you. I don't like the way you're treating my daughter. Ah, Paul. You took her out last night. Well, I brought her by. That's what I mean! <laughs> well, the next number, we're going to play a real hot tune called Fascinating Rhythm. Take it, boys. <laughs> 